Welcome everyone and welcome to class uh, nine for day nine of uh, building science and home inspection. In today's class, we're gonna start with the heating and we are just continuing uh, our tour in the uh, potential house for the required uh, inspection. In the heating, it's important to keep your heating system operating safely and efficiently. A crew examination by a home inspector or qualified service company will show if repairs are necessary. So just like uh, what to do or what we have to look for, normally in the heating system of the houses, we usually look for uh, high fuel bills. This will give us some indication that there are something wrong in the system and the efficiency or most likely with the building envelope, like it's uh, old house or there are some deficiencies or the building envelope is not good or they did not uh, go with the required R value if the house is in you. Sometimes there are some holes or breaking in that system. The other thing is uneven heat distribution and or short on off cycle. So whenever we hear the uh, furnace, Quite often, it means that something wrong. How it works? Uh, normally, let us say that this house, you put the thermometer to temperature of 21. So I need 21 degrees Celsius. Normally, the thermostat detect, and now the temperature of the house is 22. After uh, one minute, two minutes, five minutes, 10 minutes, it depends on many factors. We're gonna discuss it uh, in details later. The temperature will go down of course i'm talking about the winter uh, season and let us say the temperature outside is minus 10. so this 21 after five minutes it will become uh, 20. then it become 19. before it goes to 18 the uh, signal coming from the main thermostat which i assume let us say in the main floor it come all the way to the furnace and the furnace will go on so the temperature start to, ri uh, to rise, 19, 20, 21, 22, stop. Or maybe 23, it depends how they uh, build that furnace and how it works with the system. That all that one from the 10 on to off, that what we call it the cycle. So let us say I have a new house with good efficiency with that one. So even the temperature outside is minus 10 or minus 15, Maybe I hear that cycle or that uh, furnace uh, turn on every uh, 20 minutes, okay? While an old house or if I uh, have problem with the insulation, maybe it runs every 7 minutes or 8 minutes. So this also gives us some uh, idea. The other thing is the noisy uh, furnace fan. Again, this is giving me some indication that something wrong sometimes not the fan itself maybe some other related uh, uh, elements of that furnace or the system maybe bouldering maybe it's uh, dirty filter uh, which cause that noise but most of the time of course it's the maybe the fan itself then dense loose joints in flue pipe corrosion on flue pipes toot on or near flue pipes and finally, uh, rusty or inoperable humidifier. So that's what you have to look for. There are some other things, yes. But normally, let us say I'm a new home inspector. I am not very experienced. So it's a good idea that I have to review all that one or rehearse the information before I start my uh, inspection. Oil heating, uh, stuck barometric damper. Smoky smell, oily dirt on heat uh, registers, oil leaks. So this is for the uh, oil heating, uh, and uh, maybe some other relating factors. Maybe you would say, "Oh, almost now nobody uses it. Why I have to care?" No, because you're gonna do the inspection, and you don't know how old is the house. So your assignment one day for a house with 90 years old. Next day, maybe you have a work for a uh, new house, just like two or three years old. Uh, next is the gas and the propane heating. 
what you have to look for here gas odor this is serious thing and you have to be very careful in case uh, the other kind of heating i have the electrical uh, electric heating and then the electric heating we're gonna look for the uh, dust on heating elements uh, scored uh, dry, uh, drops or uh, furniture and uh, I have also another system which is the hot water and the steam heating which was very common in the old houses still I have it in the buildings now in the new houses I don't think that we go with the hot water and the steam heating uh, because of the uh, I would say maybe the cost also for the problems with that uh, radiators and that uh, pipes and many times it's leaking and uh, even uh, noisy sometimes so it's not used anymore or let us say uh, now it's used in very rare cases however if you have such thing in your uh, targeted house which you're gonna inspect you have to look for the leaks look for the uh, noises during operation whenever you run it and also you have to look for the uneven heating this is serious thing because sometimes some places uh, are hot some places not so normally the designer assume that the heat will be distributed for all the radiators uh, for the things okay and then finally you have the uh, wood uh, heating which is the grease store uh, build up now uh, this is like uh, some sketch it's showing you the uh, conventional oil furnace or uh, water uh, boiler and uh, some uh, explanation about it okay so look at it, read it, and I'm going to explain it. Yes, so here uh, I like that note here, which is common practice. The good thing here, I in Ontario, uh, mainly with the gas, always, you know, it's a good thing to keep the record, but mainly for the gas, we see that most of the inspection, maintenance, and main uh, gas uh, suppliers or maintenance uh, firms, companies, individuals, uh, 
even uh, private uh, small businesses whenever they come for furnace always they put a tag and uh, i can tell that most of that tags are semi-permanent i mean they don't just give you a paper uh, please call us whenever no they put some like phone number their website and when was the surface when will be the next expected inspection and this helps a lot most of the people they lose uh, such important information or the phone or uh, the contact number whenever they need it and of course this will be a great help for you as a home inspector just to see what's happening so a sticker giving the date and the results of the last surface inspection and tune up should be on or near your furnace because don't forget the furnace itself is very hot so they have to put it in some place uh, which can last uh, and also uh, very clear inspect oil furnaces once a year and gas furnace once every uh, two years uh, i don't agree with that one i still prefer even with the gas furnace to be inspected every year anyhow insist on a written report showing what was inspected and tested the test results and adjustments or repairs made this information is useful as a record of your furnaces performance they are talking now about of course the homeowner and most of the time the homeowner will have that documents or at least you can read the uh, date of the last inspection a high heating bill poor heat distribution or short on off cycles are signs the furnace needs uh, adjustment or that there is a problem so consult the charts for different heating system below so uh, again uh, you are not like a gas technician or a specialist so whenever you see something here you can put a comment for example uh, the gas bill seems to be high relative to the of course whenever you compare you have to compare apple to apple house to house so you cannot compare 4000 square feet house old one with uh, 2000 uh, square feet uh, new house the second one uh, have to be at least half the consumption of the first house so the older the house the consumption will be more the bigger the house the consumption will be more so from the experience or from your records or from the common practice if you are in this field for some time or you try to get or gather some information of similar houses and i know for this uh, two bedroom house let us say for the whole year they have to pay in this area two thousand dollar for the gas bills and uh, this house they paid the 3200 oh this is 60 percent more than the average yes maybe they have more equipment maybe they go in more often but this have to be 10 15 percent more not 60 percent so most likely uh, there is a, a real problem with the system itself with the system efficiency or most likely i would say it's with the building envelope and there will be some more heat exchange more loss of the heat and then uh, this means more consumption of the gas and uh, as a final result is uh, more uh, uh, cost for that uh, bills forced air furnace uh, for the oil gas and electric so what's happening here always i have some forced air furnace the idea is that you have hot air and then you have a fan this air is trapped inside or just confined and that fan creating a pressure push the air to go through the ducts and then it will be distributed for the whole house now how you uh, heat that uh, air so maybe by burning the oil, that is uh, the old uh, system most likely, or by gas, or by electricity, which is the cleanest, but of course, I would say maybe it is the most uh, expensive one. And uh, it's not very friendly like the uh, natural gas, because the electricity also, whenever we uh, 
whenever we build it or whenever we create it, whenever we produce the electricity, also maybe we use non-resilient uh, resources. Okay, so it's better if we can use the natural gas in general for the environment, you know. Uh, and uh, of course, one of the most important factors which decide is the people like environment. We don't like to do contamination or to exhaust our resources. But I would say the uh, dollar value, the cost, the value uh, take a significant role in deciding the final one. So whenever you combine the factors together with the time, now in uh, our days, these days, most likely I am going to go with the uh, natural gas as a resource for the uh, heating and uh, giving me the energy required to heat the building or the house. Okay, so just uh, look for that three conditions. And also I want you to read the cause and solution. Again, as I said, for me, I have to know the cause and solution for sure. If I am the homeowner, if I am a home inspector, maybe I have just to comment and then to consult home and what the skill level is required to do it. Let us now see the uh, cases or the condition that uh, you may face whenever you do your home inspection. Uh, the first condition is dirty air filter. Dirty air filter is the most common and costly problem. Costly because clogged filters can increase the fuel consumption considerably. How often you have to change the filter depends on household activities and outdoor air quality. When the air filter is dirty with the plugged air holes, change the filter. Some filters can be cleaned and reused. In general, the filter is not expensive. Most of the furnaces here, you have to look for 20, 30, maximum 40 bucks. Most of the uh, filters, and it's easy to be replaced. And in this case, the home, the homeowner, I would say, gonna reduce it on the skill level one. Now, look here, this is an important thing. I'm just telling you. Now you are not the home owner, you are the home inspector. Replacing the filter is easy for uh, David, it's easy for Michael, maybe it's not easy for you. What I want to say that the filter, sometimes you just pull and replace, done. Some filters, it have to be folded and you retain it back. And uh, I have seen it myself many times. Some guys, uh, if you never did that before, you are just living in an apartment or living in a home, but somebody doing for you, you are not, and you are a home inspector. And this is simple thing. You assume it, but uh, you have not seen different kinds of filters. Just imagine you are doing the home inspection, somebody watching you, he think that you are the professional top of the line guy, okay. And you pull that filter, you cannot retain it back. Why? Because it have to be bent in such a way to go there, or there is a groove there. And you stuck. Somebody watching you, you will be under pressure, uh, 
and you don't know how to return it back, and then uh, it ends, uh, okay, nobody with you. You are the professional guy. So you spend two, three minutes, you cannot. You try to push, you cannot. So now you have two choices. Uh, either you keep doing and every uh, minute going on, uh, your uh, situation will be uh, worse. Or sometimes maybe your client, the person who wants to buy the home, maybe he say, excuse me, sir, let me do it this way. Boop, and he did it. What's that one? So what I want to say, this is very simple thing. I am just telling you, if you cannot handle it, even don't do it. This is not good. Uh, this is part of your job. You have to do it, but I would rather not to do it. Just to skip this one if you are not very sure how to open the filter and return it back. Uh, again, this is not very good. So what I advise you in this case, uh, mainly I assume that you will have time before starting your work uh, depending on yourself and all. Try to check whatever filters are available in the market, how they replace it. Don't forget, sometimes the houses are old and maybe different things. You can check online, see the things now, a lot of tips, videos, uh, uh, movies, just show you that one specific. I think you will master it. But still, you saw many things and they're, they surprised that with your first or second or tenth inspection, a kind of filter you have never seen like it before. You know what? Don't take chances. That's my advice. You know, I don't take chances with it. Next is the noisy uh, furnace fan. So this is, as I said, it's one. But uh, again, this one uh, I have a lot of uh, uh, concern with it. A noisy furnace fan, the main uh, cause of noisy furnace fan is loose fan, belt, adjust the tension, adjust the tension, oh, I, I don't think this is easy for me, on the fan belt, not too tight, not very loose, oh, and tighten all loose mounting screws, dirt on fan blades can restrict airflow and unbalance the fan, Clean carefully with a strong detergent, but first turn off the electricity. So now, turn off the electricity, tighten it, not too much, not too tight, not, you know, I need some experience here. I don't think that somebody who is just not very familiar, what do you mean not too tight? The problem is that what kind of tools? Some people have a range. This is a small range by the manual. And sometimes, which is not recommended, maybe you have a big range. So whenever the range is long, the momentum which you apply on it or the creating final force will be more than the normal one. So with a simple, simple click or simple push, maybe you tighten it too much. Okay, so that's not good. That's why I say this one, it uh, not look so easy so i would say the skill level here in our textbook they suggest four which i completely agree mm, i don't like to say five because you don't need a professional engineer or some big but i would say uh, for sure you need a uh, uh, gas technician or at least somebody who is really handy and familiar with such kind of works so skill level four uh, for you as a home inspector, you say, you know what, uh, uh, during our inspection, uh, we can, or we notice, or let us say, uh, there is a noisy furnace fan, which have to be fixed, or which have to be uh, addressed by the others, or a uh, gas technician is highly recommended to take care of the furnace, or you can say the furnace needs a uh, professional maintenance, any any statement, any words, just to put uh, some uh, notice for the potential buyer or for the homeowner that there are something or you saw or you feel some concern 
about this uh, noisy Carlos fan. Uh, then we have the dents, uh, loose joints in the flue pipe. The flue pipe which joins the furnace or boiler to the chimney is subject to vibrations. Anything less than a well sealed and start the flue pipe can reduce furnace efficiency and pose a serious fire and health hazard adjustment. Repair or replace parts immediately. Make sure there is nothing combustible within the 8 inch of the flue pipe. In reality, there are some requirements with the HVAC system in Ontario Building Code, also with the safety issues with the Building Code of Canada, and also here there are uh, many rules here, mainly in Ontario and Canada. Also, we are following ASHRAI, A-S-H-R-A-A, ASHRAI. Normally, that deals with the design, and we use it a lot here. Most of our mechanical engineer and HVAC engineer, they go with ASHRAI. Okay, and uh, uh, this is a... Uh, yeah, so uh, ASHRAE, A-S-H-R-A-E, ASHRAE, uh, in reality always they write it in uppercase, and uh, ASHRAE is the American, this is A, uh, American uh, Society of Heating, Refrigerating, and uh, uh, Air Conditioning Engineer. So this is the American Society of Heating, Refrigerating, and Air Conditioning Engineer. And normally they publish a lot of standards. And uh, I have here some statistics which indicate that there are uh, more than 4,000 plus, more than 4,000 plus standards here. Okay. Uh, dealing with that one, and it's available online, but of course, you have to pay for it. Uh, part of it is the standard, the most common one may be 189.1, which is the standard for design of high performance green buildings. Also for the low buildings, they have something there. Uh, in our company, for example, we are dealing with that one. And uh, I have a certified uh, uh, HVAC engineer. He's a professional engineer. Also, he was a student with North American College 10 years ago. He is one of the most uh, recognized HVAC engineers, mechanical engineers, who are dealing with the uh, design and modification of the HVAC systems in Ontario. And that guy, uh, I remember many designs whenever he did it for us, for our company use that ASHRAE and we use it as a reference. Can I use that American standard? Yes. How can I use it? Because it has been mentioned in the Ontario Building Code. So in case you have some legal action, you have some problem, I have some court case, they say, okay, which standard you use? I can say, oh, I am using Ontario Building Code, which referred me to such a standard American. Um, this is acceptable here in Canada and Ontario. Okay. Uh, again, here, all that one, we said uh, level four, of course, here you don't need the design, so I don't need the professional engineer, but again, I need uh, somebody who is knowledgeable just to deal with it. Another uh, three cases, corrosion or rust holes on uh, uh, flue pipe, furnace, water marks of chimneys. This one, the chimney cap is cracked or missing, which allows rainwater to penetrate cock, repoint. I need mason or chimney repair, of course. Soot accumulation on or near flue pipe or furnace. This is the reason. Again, I'm going to read it again for. A rusty or inoperable humidifier, blah, 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 all that details, heating the contractors for. So guys, if you look at it here, uh, I don't know, even for myself, sometimes I say, why this is not a three or two? No, you are dealing with gas. If it is paint, if it is uh, stucco, drywall, maybe I will go low as two, but here, because I'm dealing with gas, and this is very uh, dangerous uh, substance I deal with, very risky health issue, so I'm going to go with four. So 
So the second one, which is the suit accumulation on or near flu pipe or uh, furnace, back drafting. Again, this is one of the uh, bad things. It brings the suit, cold air and water condensation down the chimney and deadly gases into the basement. Exhaust fans or other appliances such as the fireplace are pulling air into your house through the furnace chimney provide an outdoor air supply to your furnace through a control maker this is a serious thing and many guys many people got almost just like initial poisoning or the first uh, level of uh, uh, excessive uh, carbon monoxide due to the unfull or not complete burning of the gases and uh, this is deadly one if not deadly at least it will uh, affect us it will make some dizziness and stuff so in general this is very well known uh, phenomena more than thousand years ago they know that back drafting even maybe during the uh, christianity time let us say two thousand years plus years the people at that time, whenever they build their uh, fireplaces, they know how to do it. So it was common practice. Now, these days, I have many people who are doing this one. They don't have previous experience and they don't know it. So I need somebody who is really knowledgeable in it or I have to use the common practice. So some of the things which I saw here, for example, the fireplace, I think it's a challenge. Even I, if I have a junior engineer or somebody who don't have the experience, I don't fully trust that person just to take the overall job of building the fireplace. If the guy is not experienced, at least, at least before or even after ending the work, I will let a professional guy to check it. So for you as a home inspector, you have to look for that one. Uh, mainly if it was the winter time I think it will be uh, easier and uh, if you are doing the inspection and you see that the house have uh, many fireplaces uh, all the style uh, maybe you say not like a note that uh, the fireplaces was uh, were not checked completely for the safety and stuff this have to be addressed maybe later in the winter or so make some comment don't say, oh, I did not did it, I don't know it, but try to make some notes. And if you know it, which is the best thing, of course, maybe you can make a comment. Finally, the uh, rusty or inoperable uh, humidifier. Humidifiers attached to forced air heating systems often require uh, more cleaning and maintenance than the furnace itself. If neglected, the humidifier will clog and corrode and eventually uh, and eventually uh, stop working replace defective humidifier or disconnect it if no longer needed of course for you as a home inspector you cannot disconnect or so you have just to comment on it now we're gonna go with the uh, other kind of uh, furnaces which is the oil furnace okay so now what i'm going to do I will give you some time just to read that uh, few pages. We're going to go with the oil furnace. I want you to read the condition, cause, solutions, and so. Then on the same page, uh, this is a figure that represents uh, uh, oil storage tank. And most likely now, we, as we said, maybe we don't use it anymore. But you will see it in many old houses. There's still many homes in Ontario that have this one. Then the natural gas, uh, gas and the propane furnace. That is the most common one. Again, I want you to go through it. And this is the uh, uh, figure for it. And then the electrical uh, or electric base heating. Okay. This also still I have many many homes. And that is the figure for it. So up to here, let us say maybe 15 minutes. I want you to read it and uh, we're going to continue with the uh, 
explanation of the different uh, systems. So starting from uh, page uh, 13.
Yeah, so we're going to look in back. So uh, again, return back to the natural gas and the propane furnaces. Uh, gas and propane furnaces require uh, less attention than oil furnace because they have a cleaner burn, which is correct. But by the way, it's also dangerous and we have to be careful with it. However, they can still pose a hazard, which is correct. So now what they say, uh, the thing is gas odor. Oh, this is the most risky thing and uh, this is five so natural gas and propane companies add a substance to natural gas and propane to give it a full tank like odor so it can be smelled if it leaks natural gas and propane are extremely flammable if there is a leak right away look here eliminate all ignition sources immediately don't smoke don't use the phone use a neighbor's phone or cell phone now i think almost everybody has a cell phone so the bottom line don't use the phone line from that house don't turn electrical switches on or off just leave it just uh, evacuate evacuate the house immediately call or notify your natural gas utility or propane gas supplier immediately i don't think that you're gonna face such things i don't know what is the chance one in thousand, one in million, but anyhow, I mean, in case, in case you uh, got such a situation right away, and this is a skill level uh, five, uh, it needs professional people to deal with it in a serious way. And this uh, figure represents the furnace. As you see here, there are something just for the flue pipe going, and this is the supply, so the air coming all the way there and collect from the whole house and return by the air uh, plenum uh, of course you see here because it's hot water so the outlet the air supply at the top and this is the i would call it cold air but the reality is the retain air uh, in general it's uh, colder than the air uh, using the duct and that is here the filter you remember what we said for the filter this is the easy way but many coming like like a box and your filter is painted like this one here so whenever you open it it's longer than that one so you have just to turn it paint it i mean and fix okay and also this is very common then going to the electric uh, baseboard heating again here i have uh, two uh, very common uh, conditions dust on heating elements this is easy one this is easy one this is skill level one and heating elements can uh, pollute the air in the house as they uh, scorch household dust with the heat as well dust on heating elements reduces heating efficient efficiency so vacuuming or dust the fans on the heating elements before the heating season so before the winter maybe i need some maintenance so the home owner or the occupant they would do it or they ask somebody to do it for them for you as inspector, as I said, same thing. You have just to check and comment on the condition of it. The other one is the scrushed uh, drapes or uh, furniture. This needs uh, uh, somebody who knows the uh, electrical connections and maybe a certified electrician permanently installed furnishing or drapes that are too close to heaters can become scrushed move the uh, furnishing or have an electrician move or adjust the heater then i have the hot water and the steam heating hot water and steam heating systems 
are among the most durable and reliable residential heating systems. However, they can be quite old and need maintenance and adjustment. Again, here I see the hot uh, water radiator. This is a typical one. And uh, also on this figure, it shows you what to check and what you see. Normally, uh, we have to make sure that all air bleeders valves function properly. Uh, look here, the worst thing for me, or maybe for many people in the construction, whenever you mix water with electricity with uh, metal, so there will be rust, there will be leak, and sometimes this is stuck. So it has to be maintained, it has to be flexible. Also, check for leaks around valves and the dripping. Always the valve have some useful life. So this is not like for 50 years. So the valve have to be replaced after a certain time, even with the good maintenance. Yes, it may last uh, five, 10 years for somebody only, while it will last, let us say, 25 or 30 years. But after some time, it will be a little bit hard to turn. It will stuck. It needs some maintenance or start to leak. So in this case, uh, somebody have to check it and maybe replace it. Check that all valves are adjustable and then uh, smoothly. Uh, for you as an inspector, I would say, you know what? For the overall, you can just comment. You can say the hot water radiator are uh, radiators all or let us say a hot water radiator in the upper uh, office is in poor shape done somebody else who are more knowledgeable maybe he would say uh, it seems that the check uh, valves for the radiator located at the main or at the master bedroom needs to be replaced or need to be repaired or you know what more precise or maybe you can put i mean i'm just giving you some examples and then you choose whatever you think proper for you and also depending on your experience so whenever you have more experience or you are more knowledgeable in this field maybe you can put more diagnostic uh, or uh, i mean description for the uh, case of that uh, hot water radiator so maybe for hot water radiator, we can say for one of the houses, in general is in a fair condition, or in general is in very good condition, or maybe in good condition. Anyhow, I be careful with using the word uh, very good. Uh, I would say in good or maybe fair, if you think that it is just like around average. Uh, then, uh, going to the hot water and steam heating hot water and steam heating so sometimes i have noises or uneven heating air in the system prevents the circulation of water causing both noises and cold radiator bleed off bleed off the air through the small valve at the top of each radiator in all types of radiator maybe have automatic bleeding devices which may be clogged bleed off all radiators at the beginning of the heating season and whenever necessary during the winter if the problem happens often discuss it with the heating contractor or plumber they are talking to the homeowner or you as a home inspector you have just to look at it and normally if they don't maintain it in this way you will see that there are some noises or uneven heating if you uh, doing if you are doing your inspection during the cold season or during the winter if you are doing that one in the summer maybe you can make a comment that uh, uh, because uh, our inspection is in the summer or due to the weather or a sense that the heating system is not running during our inspection we cannot comment a lot about the condition of it or the precise condition of the heating system cannot be determined uh, since it is not working during our uh, site uh, inspection however sometimes if somebody they say you know what uh, make it ready if the temperature is reasonable we're gonna still run it so that it will be ready okay in that case maybe you can't make some uh, simple comments 
The other thing is the leaks, and uh, this one again, we need some professional help as a homeowner. And this is the uh, level four, and you need uh, plumbing, uh, plumber, or uh, heating contractor. Leaks must be uh, repaired promptly to avoid water damage, as fresh water automatically replaces the water lost by leaks. It can rust the pipes and radiators. For serious leaks, uh, first turn off the power to the boiler and then shut off the water supply feeding the boiler call a plumber or a heating contractors okay maybe i will do that one let us say for some reason you're doing an inspection your client doesn't know because he's just like you he is like a guest or new to that home and the homeowner is not living it's a vacant house for a long time so you have to be careful and you see something serious here the water is just like leaking or there are some ponding of the water someplace try to shut it off whether the water or the electricity if the pressure coming from the electricity maybe the easiest thing is just to shut it off and say you know what uh, the system doesn't function very well or there are you are not to be very precise in it even you are not knowledgeable but there are some current or visible uh, damage or potential damage i think you must do some action as a home inspector of course if you are the homeowner this is different thing you have to call you have to do it and, and whenever i say you do it it doesn't mean that yourself no but you uh, call a professional uh, company or somebody who can do it in a professional way then i have the wood burning appliances this is maybe common in the cottages and also in the old houses now i would say it's uh, very rare this is the free standing uh, wood stove and then in this case i have to check for the chimney pipe or to stone build up prior to operation also i have to check that the door gasket provides tight seal because otherwise if it is not tight seal uh, there will be some uh, gas most likely uh, a lot of carbon monoxide being returned back to the living area which is very risky environmental protection agency uh, certified wood heating equipment ensures high efficiency and low emission also this is in reality for the state and uh, here in ontario and canada we have similar laws in reality more restricted and uh, most of that uh, wood burning appliance whenever you buy it from the supplier from uh, uh, any major supplier most likely they follow the rules and the regulations in Ontario so anything you see it in the major stores uh, Costco Walmart Canadian Tire Home Depot I would say uh, most of the time they follow the local regulations uh, so because I assume that the people, whenever I buy from such big store, right away, maybe I will install it or I will use it. So normally, normally they go by the regulation. However, for the projects, or if I am a professional, I don't depend on that uh, a lot. So whenever I have to supply certain things and I bought it from store X, which is big store, uh, huge, have different branches across, uh, the province or uh, Canada so uh, my job I am as a professional maybe I will read what they say this made in so this uh, meet or uh, build according to uh, Canadian standard association so or it meets the requirements of Ontario building code and maybe that's okay and sometimes even I go uh, extra step by testing it so example, I want to buy one appliance here uh, for my house. That's it. Maybe I will take it and uh, put it there, uh, build it. Uh, I mean, just I'm telling you, I, whenever I'm saying, let us say this is the common practice. Doesn't mean that this is the perfect or the best thing, but it maybe it's acceptable. But let us say I am a home builder and I have. Uh, 500 units or 700 and they're going to buy all these uh, appliances whether it's a wood burning or anything else similar i think i must have engineer or somebody in the, in the purchasing department whenever i do the order 
to check that this is according to the current uh, regulation and most of the time the inspector coming from the authorities from the government from the city from the region normally also they check and i send them the specification for it in bigger projects or something i will bring it from uh, uh, exterior uh, or just like international i have to bring this one from such country uh, overseas i think i have to go exactly with the product and uh, maybe i have to test some of them testing just like simple test or sometimes uh, test uh, till failure in, in a way or another okay so it depends all that one yes there are some certain rules uh, and sometimes we use the common sense whatever is becoming a practice uh, the bottom line that for one two uh, simple things you can't depend on that major stores however it's better sometimes to check mainly whenever you see something unique or it's not common in the market then i have the problems here with the or the conditions with the wood burning appliances i have the uh, creaser uh, build up okay so the creaser build up just let me read this one that is with the wood burning appliances a smoldering fire produces smoke. Smoke from a smoldering fire causes crystal uh, buildup in the chimney. Burning wet wood, burning wet wood, also causes crystal in a chimney. Test if crystal is uh, a serious fire hazard. Burn small hot fires, not large slow burning fires. Uh, your stove may be designed to control the burn, but a furnace cannot control Crystal. So, clean the chimney with a suitable brush at the beginning and end of each uh, heating season. Some chimneys will require sweeping more than often. A chimney sweep or wood heating contractor can also inspect and clean your uh, chimney. So I have to consult chimney sweep or wood heating uh, contractor and this is level uh, four okay so now uh, i would say this is for the homeowner now for you as home inspector number one you have just to uh, make a general comment on the chimney that have to be inspected by the owner number one number two don't do the chimney inspection even you are knowledgeable or familiar with that one because you have been not prepared for that one this is not easy this is risky and sometimes dirty work and you don't like just to ruin your uh, uh, clothes and you even just to look inside it so try not to do it plus of course your client or the uh, potential buyer is not going to pay you for that one the other thing which i uh, we don't have time just to explain in that details but in general there are a lot of research about the crystal buildup and this uh, material is uh, actually uh, damaging uh, even the vision for the human also breathing crystal uh, may uh, cause irritation through the whole respiratory system and they think that it is also one of the reason to create a lung cancer and a serious breathing problems so there are many studies on cancer risk also the european for example commission uh, they banned the using of the risco just to burn it also and they found that there could be a cancer uh, risk so there are a lot of studies uh, to understand exactly the risk uh, behind the uh, uh, criso and uh, in general now the people uh, don't clean the chimneys like before I think for simple reason is that uh, they don't use the the fireplace as a fireplace what I want to say that now uh, the majority of the fireplaces either it's for decoration or i don't use the wood anymore i use the natural gas or the electricity and even for a professional now whenever you see some uh, new fireplaces you see for the wood so either it's not wood it is just like uh, other material it looks like wood 
or they put wood but the main source of the heat is from the burning the gas or even the electricity so in this case uh, i am going to save a lot on the cost also on that material because now I, we are not living in a, in a forest or in a rural area on in the uh, far away suburb whenever the wood is available for low and big houses no now our spaces are tight so uh, the wood burning appliances in general became rare so you can see it now maybe in the big luxury houses and they don't use it a lot because there is another sources or maybe still in the cottages in the farm buildings or farmhouses and such things however uh, still i have many houses let us say here in our area in toronto area and gta surrounding mainly for that house is 80 90 years and uh, let us say the people are still keeping that uh, fireplace and the people are all the style who like the uh, fireplace to be used with the uh, wood and they collect the wood most of such houses i think that they gonna uh, clean uh, by uh, chimney uh, cleaners uh, and on continuous basis so the bottom line for you as inspector don't uh, go in the details of that chimney just put uh, general note that you did not inspect it precisely and somebody else have to uh, consider uh, this uh, job then i have uh, back drafting we talk about this one exhaust fans uh, clothes dryers and other appliances in the house to compete with the fireplace or stove for air when starting a fire and when it dies down so whenever you just uh, air exhausting appliances in the house may cause smoke to come down not up the chimney so that uh, carbon monoxide or that uh, smoke will come down open a window when starting a fire and i would say also open a window maybe whenever you close it so in general such a thing with the back drafting it's a headache and uh, here the people they used to have a full surface uh, not like uh, 100 years ago the old generation they work hard for the house all the family just gather maybe in one room they open the fireplace then after uh, two three hours the house became warm maybe they will keep it off and whenever they sleep maybe have uh, let us say two coats two layers of clothes now the people are like in the underwear uh, and they enjoy the hot weather inside the house and the weather outside is minus 20. i don't say this is wrong but this is a lot of consumption of the energy again uh, before i heat maybe one two rooms and yes maybe the whole house reasonable now you see big big building or big house and maybe you have couple or just single guy everything is heated of course this is more comfortable these days but this is affecting the consumption the environment and of course it means extra cost extra bills cost so open a window and then whenever you start a fire so uh, here what they suggest to provide a combustion in air supply directly to wood burning the furnace equipped to receive an outside air source or other types uh, contacts are required yeah so in general now whenever you have even the washing or dryer machine you see that there are some exhausts which extend outside the house or the building same thing with that uh, wood burning appliances or the heating appliances always it's connected that's why whether it's install or repair or maintenance always i am looking for level four in ontario here this uh, profession is highly control and uh, it's license and normally we have a license uh, gas technician or license HVAC guys plus of course if you need a full design or full implementation of a new system you need a professional engineer with the engineering stamp 
Then I have the cracked tip or deteriorating fire bricks inside fireplace, cracked or loose, uh, or uh, disintegrating uh, mortar joints. So the age, abuse, excessive moisture, freezing thaw cycles can weaken the protection of the inside lining of a fireplace. Have it checked by a wood heating specialist or type technician or a brick mason that is to the homeowner. For me, I just make a comment on that one and I say such surface is required from a third party or just I say from a gas technician or something. Okay, so uh, now we are just covering the ventilation. Again, uh, I will give you 15 minutes just to read the following pages. I am now on page number uh, 18. This is the ventilation. What we have to look for, the ceiling is closed. And then it shows you the heat recovery heat recovery ventilator which is hrv then uh, the ventilation again the condition the causes that is on the other page page 19 then talking about the mold must smell in basement and uh, again this is in general these the ones Going to the continuation of the ventilation, talking about the exhaust fans. Then again, the HRV, the heat recovery, page 20. Then the electric surface and wiring. And uh, the knob and tube, this is the figure. Okay, shows you and what you have to look for. And then the condition causes and uh, solutions uses and the blown one and the cases okay so up to the plumbing up to page uh, 22 uh, read it and normally what we do unfortunately now we don't have interaction Normally, what we used to do in the classes is that uh, we ask the students certain questions. So normally here I have 10 cases and we just like going with a living case. And then I ask uh, John, uh, what do you think is the constantly blown? Who is going to do it? So that student, he can uh, uh, explain it for us. Then another participation from another student and Sometimes you put it in sequence, it depends on how many students are in the class, how to do it anyhow. So what I'm going to do now, we don't have such option now with this recording. So what I suggest that is that I give you five, six, eight pages maximum, read it, uh, make some notes, and just like uh, I am asking you before explaining it, okay? So uh, I will give you that minutes just to go through it read it and make your uh, notes
So uh, starting with the ventilation, install uh, air in basement, and uh, the poor air circulation in basement is a common problem. So most older uh, houses uh, were built with a cellar that was not intended as a basement living area. If the house is heated with a forced air furnace, run the furnace fan continuously to circulate the air between the basement and upper floors. Of course, all that one just to get rid of the stale air in the basement. In houses with electric baseboard heaters or hot water radiators, opening the basement windows and windows on upper floors from time to time, keep basement of course door open during this time, will uh, flush stale air from the basement. This practice is not energy conserving in winter and not recommended during the peak summer months unless uh, a dehumidifier is installed in the basement. Uh, of course, here in the first case, this is just like skill level one. It's easy, operate the furnace or ventilate also here. The other one, which is uh, needs a professional person, in basement, an exhaust fan or ventilation system should be installed and operated as required. So ventilation or heating. Unfortunately, this is not part of the uh, Ontario Building Code. I mean, it's recommended, but uh, the owners are not forced to do it. It's not like the carbon monoxide installation or like the damp proofing and so on. However, what I see that most of the houses which have been built, let us say, in the last five years, now they start to install all that one because more people are understanding that one. And also the builders, they like it. It's better. And the, also the buyers, they looking for it. Now the people are more aware of the importance and how to uh, get rid of the stale air in the basements plus the ventilation and the requirements of that uh, uh, ventilation. The other thing is the mold and musty smell in basement. Uh, mold and mildew are more moisture related problems than ventilation problems. If source of moisture are not properly controlled in the basement, conditions will become idle for uh, moldy growth. Avoid uh, Storing water laden materials such as firewood, uh, drying laundry can also increase the humidity levels and create conditions for mold and mildew. Install, install, sorry, install a dehumidifier to control humidity levels in the air. Place the dehumidifier in an open area and adjust it to maintain dry air in the basement. You clean it frequently. Uh, just all that one uh, for the mold to grow it needs at least 60 or 65 percent moisture minimum and also it like the stale air don't like uh, good circulation also also it hate uh, sun so whenever there are some uh, sunlight also it don't like it so I think this is typical in the basement. Moisture is high. Why? Because the people maybe uh, store the wood. And by the way, the wood uh, has a lot of moisture. The wood for the burning, uh, mainly whenever you bring it from the forest or from uh, outside, maybe 25% or even 30% of moisture. And it's going to dry inside the basement because it's... Uh, warm and all that will be extra moisture and then in the corner there is no air circulation no movement behind the appliances uh, behind the uh, desks behind the you know what fridge and so on so it's a potential uh, place and very good environment for the mold to grow then if the mold and musty smell persist after eliminating moisture sources and the furnaces, take car carpeting and underlay it may be mold. Remove or clean affected carpeting, carpeting, basement, it is not uh, recommended because it's cold. Uh, so it's better just to have, uh, sorry, it's not cold. 
I mean, because it's uh, collecting mold easily, so it's better to have ceramic, marble, or wood. But again, on the other side, uh, such material are cold, not like the carpet. So you gonna win from one side, you will suffer from the other side to see the overall system. We have to vent it very well and uh, consider the other alternatives, which are uh, economically visible and uh, within the budget of the homeowner. Okay, for you as a home inspector, what you have to say whenever there are some smell or unhealthy, say, you know what, there are some potential of uh, mold growth, or uh, there are some signs of. Uh, mold the presence in this basement a part of your job is not to uh, find the mold but uh, you can make a note of course sometimes no the mold already go and you can see some green area wet area on the drywall or even the case may be worse it became uh, like a black so the first uh, stage of the mold is uh, you can see the moisture and the green one may be some smell, but whenever it becomes dark, it becomes poisonous uh, effect on the uh, breathing and on the environment of the house. So you have to do it. And by the way, in the building science, also sometimes maybe you have to detect the mold. So whenever we do the survey, sometimes we do the survey for the mold in the houses and in the building. Here, what the common practice before you need experience guys they go and they say oh there is a potential mold here or uh, some of them they have that sniffering dogs so they come with the dog and most of such experienced uh, dogs you know what they train the dog so that it can uh, detect the mold uh, its capability or smelling maybe up to 50 times the normal human so that is a big thing and uh, don't be surprised if uh, some people just uh, checking for the presence of the mold by using that dog. However, now of course uh, in these days uh, we have uh, like air collector. So if somebody send me I can be better than any uh, professional person or that dogs by collecting the samples. So normally what we do these days, again, as I said, this is not home inspection. This is building science, a special assignment just to do the mold survey. Normally there is a small machine and there is a small motor in it. Collect the air, so I collect the air. Most of that uh, equipment's available now, let us say in GT area. I think it collect about 15 liter a minute. So during the winter, different from the summer, so I collect and I take the readings in three minutes or five minutes. So in other words, I will collect, let us say, uh, 45 uh, liter of air or 75 liter for the five minutes. So what gonna do? I will run that air. This machine will intake the air and it run on a special cassette. That one, it has a strip inside and most of that mold species stuck inside then I take it to the lab under the microscope they will identify the type the amount and the concentration of that species then I compare it with the outside again uh, in our company we did many assignments like this also we got the chance before uh, many of uh, our students students of North American College they did such uh, site uh, visits so what we did and uh, you can visit uh, our main classroom in north american college downtown toronto uh, i mean uh, you can see a lot of uh, pictures it's for the our students doing such inspection so they are carrying that small machine collecting the air samples and then we take that cassettes which are fresh with the uh, samples, we sent it to the lab. There are three, four labs in uh, Toronto area. Uh, and that labs are uh, bio, uh, biological labs. They dealing with the different type of species and then you will get the report. 
So this report tells you, for example, for such kind of species, which is available even in the mouth of the people, even on the, the, our fingers or body, let us say in the mouth, or let us say inside the house, is 10,000. Outside is 1,000. What that means, higher concentration, so there are something not good, because always that species are available, okay? So I'm just explaining that one. You have not to do it for the client. If you are the homeowner, it's okay. If your assignment is a mold survey, you're gonna do it, okay? But normal home inspection, what you're gonna do, you say there are some signs of uh, mold, it's highly recommended to carry out uh, uh, mold survey. Done, or any kind of uh, comment in the meaning. Exhaust fan ineffective. Also, this is possible. Exhaust fan ineffective. Maybe it's simple thing or reasonable or maybe with some difficulty. Exhaust fans need to have the clean fan blades and restricted and unrestricted and obstructed outlets and ducts to the outdoors. Exhaust fan uh, air flow depends on how easy it is to draw air out of a space. Too tight and in a closure can virtually uh, suffocate the fan of exhaust air flow. Check that ducts are sealed, short and as straight as possible. Clean exhaust fan and check for obstructions in the outdoor exhaust hood. If the exhaust fan is clean and the duct and outdoor hood are unobstructed, check the door to the room with the exhaust fan. It should have a cut along the bottom of about 25 millimeter, which is about one inch, or louvered uh, grill. The first case here, just to clean and inspect the exhaust fan, this is very easy. Or maybe I have to undercut door or install a grill in the door. This is level two. Maybe I need a carpenter or somebody handy, but the I don't like to keep this two, so for me, two is okay. Maybe if I'm not handy, it will be a little bit ugly or not even. Uh, it's okay. I'm not touching the gas or the electricity. So skill level two will be acceptable uh, for me. And so that I'm just justifying why I don't like to give it higher rate. Finally, the exhaust fan may simply not have sufficient capacity and should be replaced. Oh, so now replacing the fan, it needs a connection. It needs some kind of electrical connection. Even it's easy. As far as there are some electrical work to be done, I would say with level uh, three. Heat recovery ventilator, which is uh, uh, called HRV as a short uh, abbreviation, not working or ineffective. Okay. The operation of most HRVs is controlled by a humidity state. This is a humidity state, a thermostat-like device that senses the humidity in the air. The ideal or the ideal uh, hu uh, humid state uh, setting is between 30 to 50 percentage relative to humidity. So I am looking for 30 to 50 percent uh, humidity. Okay, don't go less than 30 percent will be too dry, more than 50%, it looks like uh, red. I saw many houses here, many uh, people, mainly whenever you have HRV, they look for 45% moisture. Uh, again, maybe sometimes they reduce it to 40, depending on the season, whether it's uh, summer or uh, winter. Uh, more than 50%, it will be too moist, the mold, and you know what? Uh, you cannot breathe, let us say the moisture is 70% or 80%. You feel like you are on the beach. You know, I feel some difficulty in the breathing. That's with the high moisture. If it is less, let us say it's too dry inside the house, 5 or 10%. You cannot swallow. It's too dry. You feel that your, uh, you know what, uh, your mouth, I mean, uh, just, uh, again, it's not convenient. So the typical one is 30 to 50 percent humidity, and this will be controlled by the HRV. 
if the setting is too high and uh, the indoor relative humidity is below this level, the unit will not turn on. In uh, some cases, in some cases, uh, the control or power switch on the HRV is not turned on or was shut off for the summer. Uh, check the operating uh, instructions to determine the proper operation. When HRVs are hooked up with a forced air heating system, you may have to turn the furnace fan on to start the HRV. The furnace fan circulates the fresh air through out the whole house using the heating system uh, duct work. In some cases, if the condensate a pan, a drain, a line, or air filter is a plug, a sensor in HRV prevents it from running. So the idea is uh, uh, sometimes you have to run the air. Let us say the weather outside is 22, 23 or something. So I don't like to run the air condition because uh, it's not so hot outside. And same with the house. Also, it's now not the time to run the furnace. But still to keep a fresh, clean air, maybe you have to run just like the air. And normally such options are available in most of the furnaces whenever you duct air only. So there is no furnace working. The split unit or the air condition is not working, but only the air circulation. In this case, maybe if it is uh, connected to HRV, uh, it will control at least the humidity and of course the air quality so check the humid start setting and power switches check that the furnace fan switch is on open the unit and check on set drain uh, this is uh, just like we see you have to read it you see it in the catalog or in the manufacturer this is very easy I have just to read that catalog or that instructions and do it. So, uh, level two. If operating uh, the HRV does not appear to control humidity or improve indoor air quality, the problem may be plugged outdoor intake and exhaust hoods. Sometimes the problem may be more difficult to detect and diagnose. So, the ventilation or heating contractor have to look for the overall system, and this is level four. By the way, Again, as I said, all these, it's mainly for the homeowner. For you as an uh, inspector, you have just to look for the overall condition and make some comments. So you say, you know what, uh, the ventilation system for the house have to be reassessed by a, a technician or by HR uh, or HVAC uh, specialist or a heating contractor. Going to the electrical uh, surface and uh, wiring. Electrical surface and wiring. To get an idea about the condition of the wiring in the house, examine the visible wiring and the electrical surface panel in the basement or attic. Sometimes house wiring is only partially upgraded with the new wiring in uh, visible areas and old knob and uh, old uh, no but uh, no band sorry no band the uh, tube wiring in other areas it is not safe to place the two systems together nope and the tube wiring that still has its insulating cover is stiff if it is not this curve if you plan to modify a line, replace it completely with the new wiring that includes uh, a safety ground, label all electrical circuits at the fuse or breaker box, turning fuses or breakers on and off while having someone taste lights and outlets will identify everything on each line. Regulations about electrical work vary generally across the country and it is different here also from one province to another of course there are many uh, common thing but uh, it's different in some areas uh, knowledgeable homeowners may work on electrical wiring if they obtain the proper municipal permit I would say no you need a certified electrician okay you need certified electrician to do that and uh, anyhow they give you her 
this is, I think, all the example. For example, in Ontario and BC, there are simplified electrical code book to help people with electrical installation in Quebec and the New Brunswick. Only licensed electricians can legally touch the wires. However, homeowners everywhere can inspect their wiring for problems and probably manage the fuse. I don't like also this approach. So in general, uh, I am, uh, you know what, this is like a giant or like a monster in that wires. I have not to take it for granted. I don't like to take chances. And as you see here, there is the old style, maybe the uh, panel, or maybe I have just like the circuit breakers, different things. Uh, this is for the homeowner. What I advise you as a home inspector, uh, don't go in such details. Uh, I would say I will go with the main uh, switchboard. I will read, oh, if this is 100 ampere, most of the houses, or maybe 200 ampere. The wires look in good shape. Whenever I see burn or brown one, just say, you know what, some wires seems to be on or some wires are in bad shape this have to be evaluated by electrician or you say a certified electrician have to evaluate the existing system uh, it is overloaded or so during the summer time don't do that i saw some of the home inspectors again uh, guys you have just to remember whenever i say come to practice I don't want you to be uh, just like doing everything on the top of everybody. So see whatever is the average. We try to be within that one. Uh, you are, again, just to remind you, you, are, you don't have days to do your inspection. You have to do your work very fast. I don't know your knowledge or your background, but don't, uh, don't use it in a precise way that uh, to give a differential diagnosis or an exact diagnosis uh, this is different from the inspection of the buildings or the houses whenever i got paid to do a professional let us say electrical evaluation of the building uh, just to give you an example sometimes whenever i have a big building large building and the part of my job is to evaluate the electrical system you can see that the electrical engineers or the electrician or that inspector have maybe even like an infrared camera or so even he can see or can tell which wires are overloaded so whenever i have such camera or that infrared camera uh, whenever there are some uh, cable or wires which have been overloaded i can tell that it became red orange maybe less red and whenever the color is less it means that it's not overloaded so uh, whether it's uh, i mean in any time maybe i will run most of the appliances all the machines and i check for that one in the house i don't do that one i'm just telling you even that example just to give you some idea you have not to open and check of course the electrician can do that one uh, and even you are electrician even your background is uh, electrician i don't advise you to do so so just to stick to that one keep it in your mind for a few minutes you have to make some comments about that uh, electrical uh, boards and that panels uh, the visible uh, wires and here they say uh, what is the possibilities and what they allow in uh, different provinces. Anyhow, we are also in Ontario, we have some simple uh, a code for that one. And uh, still you need certified electrician to do the work. So what I am looking for, I'm looking for deteriorated uh, wire insulation. I am looking for exposed or bare wire. I am looking for wire covered with uh, tape. This is not acceptable. All that one is bad. Uh, constantly blown fuses or trip circuit breaker. So sometimes the fuse you see that it became brown or blown. This is indication of overloading. Lights uh, dimming. Fuses or uh, circuit breakers which blow immediately after being reset. So this is the other one, the new style is on off and whenever you run something, it go off. Again, it comes and run off. 
So this means that there are something wrong in that uh, circuit. Then constantly blown main fuses or circuit breakers, insufficient capacity electrical uh, surface, worn electrical supply lines, water leakage around electrical uh, surface uh, entry. Then I'm uh, discovering the electrical surface and wiring. So just again, a couple minutes, I want you to read this one here, the cause and solution console term and why is it uh, still level here four and here is four while here is two okay so just read it and i'm going to continue with it
Uh, deteriorated wire insulation, exposed or bare wire. Wires covered with tape. Uh, age, poor workmanship, or improper wire type may cause these problems. If you discover deteriorated insulation, exposed or bare wire, or even wires that were simply connected by being twisted together, have the wiring inspected by an electrician just because there have been no problems for at least two. Let us say for the last 20 years does not mean that all electrical connections will not cause fire in the future. Uh, rodents, this is again uh, some people they forget it. Rodents may be chewing on electrical wires, in which case repairing the wire is merely dealing with the symptoms uh, rather than the cause. So, see uh, rodents and storm, and in this book, we're gonna read it. So, I need some elect uh, electrical uh, contractor. Again, this is skill level four, and uh, as we said, this is for the homeowner, for you as a home inspector. You have just to make comments. Uh, make it as precise as possible with your knowledge, with your background. Don't talk too much of something which you are not mastering it. So just maybe general comment whenever you see that, you say uh, there was some visible deteriorated wire insulation in many areas, or you can specify where you found it. Of course, most of the time you can find this one close to the main uh, switchboard or to the main electrical panel. Constantly uh, blow, uh, blown fuses or trip uh, circuits, breakers, lights, dimming. Too many appliances are plugged into the same circuit. Older houses were not designed for modern appliances and electronic system, and a few older kitchens have enough. Uh, separate circuit so whenever they share that's not good and the connected uh, transfer one or more appliances to another so this one maybe I can handle it or I need some uh, uh, distributor also uh, but every whole system no it needs different one. then maybe install a new circuit rather than use long extension cords or multiple plugs in this case I need electrical contract here they say just don't increase the things here. Uh, don't increase the capacity of a circuit by using a larger fuse. This is common mistake and uh, it's really risky. The fuse is there to prevent wires from getting hot and causing fires. By passing a fuse invites uh, trouble. Place plastic fuse size. Uh, limiters and the fuse sockets to prevent anyone from installing a larger uh, fuse than appropriate so here just let me explain this one uh, 10 years ago 50 years ago somebody put here a fuse which says this is 10 amps okay so now before i have a wire connecting and then i have this outlet so this outlet with two outlets here maybe I will run this sometimes there sometimes simultaneously so I have something here 5 ampere and I have something 4 ampere or even 6 ampere um, if you run it both simultaneously it will be overheated this wire have been designed for 10 now it's 11 maybe okay little bit overheated but just imagine now I am putting another appliances here maybe here I put some extension and distributing so there will be here five and maybe another five and here seven so what's going to happen and one day sometimes whenever i run it all simultaneously this 10 amp uh, allow you this is like a gap it allow you only 10 amp so whenever you start the second one it's 10 10.5 11 it will be breaking right away it will shut it off so somebody will go and again turn it on and then again if use again and so on so sometimes what I do I don't know how uh, the system works I say okay you know what uh, let me replace this one with a 20 amp it looks like easy I'll turn the electricity off and I replace 10 amp with a 20 it will never go down but what's the problem that now 10 11 12 it will be 17 ampere it will go all the way here and this wire will be overheated and maybe it will melt and it will be the source for a fire uh, many times 
the reason for the fire is electrical uh, shortcut or uh, overlapping or overloading such things it may be a disaster for that uh, house or the building the other thing here you have a fuse or circuit breakers blow uh, right after being replaced or reset so that means there is a short circuit somewhere in the wiring so right away it means that may be short circuit uh, disconnect all appliances on that circuit and try a new few a few fuse if the new fuse blows call an electrician to find the hidden hidden short circuit if it does not blow the short circuit is an, an appliances try them individually and so on anyhow they say too of course if replace you have just to call uh, you cannot do it otherwise i need uh, so i think this too little bit may be confusing because they assume that you will call somebody otherwise i would say i will put four for such uh, problem constantly blown main fuse or circuit breakers the electrical surface is overloaded or unbalanced this usually happens when there is a large electrical load such as an electrical uh, electric range electric clothes dryer mainly the dryer takes a lot of uh, electricity or electric uh, water heater operating at the same time so whenever they uh, operate simultaneously and in this case an electrician should rebalance or upgrade your circuits so again this is just like a new installation and upgrading for sure i need a professional person and the certified electrician to do it then more electrical supply lines water leakage around electrical surface entry Oh, this is with the major source of the electricity to the house. Check the electrical surface lines entering your house. Make sure the entry mast or conduit is secure. Check for water leakage around the mast or at the switch panel. Look for tree branches that could fall on the electrical lines. Call your local electrical uh, electric uh, utility if you find any problem of course all that one uh, most likely your electrician with the local hydro this is the highest uh, level of the authorities who are dealing with your electricity so they assume that the level is five because you cannot handle it uh, yourself okay uh, finally for uh, day nine of uh, this course building science and home inspection uh, we have that regular uh, daily uh, class assignment and normally most of my assignment i expect you to do it within uh, 10 minutes but always we say 15 minutes so now whenever you send it to me please uh, try to stick to that time this is just to checking yourself and hopefully that uh, you can do it in the proper way so today I have again a simple seven questions. Uh, you have to verify that questions uh, whether they are uh, true or false. Number one, to avoid the breaker of uh, during the operation uh, of replacing it of the operation, just replace it with another one that has higher capacity. So always you have problem with that one. Whenever you do the, any operation, you run that. It. So just let us replace it with another that's uh, true or false if you smell gas during your inspection try to fix it then call the gas company so don't just run away try to fix it do whatever you can do and then call the gas company it is okay to make simple repair if your client pay you for that extra service let us say your client is the homeowner or whatever i mean and you say you know what let us fix this one you say this one have to be done and you know how to do it what do you think it's a good idea i am going to pay you cash for that one so just do it as far as you are here is that okay that's true or false it is okay to make some sorry uh, number four the previous gas builds of the home give you an idea of the building envelope and the furnace efficiency is that correct somebody show you the gas bills for the last two years that will help you in identifying or nothing HRV is required for buildings only and not for small houses. So this is a little bit not very expensive, but also extra cost. 
So for a small house, maybe I don't need it. This is for large building. Number six, wood burning appliances have to be monitored for the smoke. So I just install it in my house and I don't care about the performance because I just bought it from uh, such uh, uh, mall or from such distributor or from such uh, source, which is uh, in business for years and I have such amount of uh, products. Is that correct? You can upgrade the main electrical panel without informing the electrical company. So the electricity, let me call it, okay? So without calling the uh, electricity. Okay. Is that correct? I have not to talk to hydro or whatever the uh, supplier of my home, okay? And then today you have uh, some uh, video it's uh, 43 minutes about the forced air fairness main problems please uh, just uh, be careful with that video what i want to say i am showing that video you have not to do it don't try it yourself maybe somebody would say okay well, i have to see it. to see it i want you to be knowledgeable in the normal fairnesses whatever the fairness is in our uh, video today i would say it's maybe 80 90 percent of the houses which uh, have been built in the last 10 years they use such kind of furnace it's a natural gas and then we burn the gas and we have a fan inside to push the air so it's forced air furnace and this guy he is a technician he shows you the different repairs the different potential this is just for your information so whenever you look at the furnace for the others, you have some idea. Again, you have not to do that. This is just like the general information. If you are in this business, maybe this will be help. I mean, business of repairing the gas and so. This will be again something interesting. If you never did such work before, you never opened that one because you are not licensed gas technician. So just have a look at it. And also this to give you like a precaution and uh, you have to be careful not to uh, do any repair or any uh, inspection which is uh, not in uh, the scope of your work. Uh, whenever you finish this one, please send me that in a class assignment for day nine and uh, have a good try with it hopefully. And uh, you have the email which have been just written here at the bottom of it. Make sure that all your assignments uh, sent to me on time. Okay, don't keep it just to the end. We're supposed to get that assignment on daily basis. Thank you very much.